Hello, and welcome to your sparkly brand. We're here to inspire and empower female entrepreneurs like you. This podcast is all about delivering no fluff, high value content that helps you grow your business. It doesn't matter if you have no budget and are still DIYing everything on your own. We're giving you the tips, tools, and strategies you need to build a sparkly empire. I'm Lauren Tassie, a copywriter and law strategist, and I'm here with my co-host, the marketing expert and branding queen, Megan Gersh. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? I am feeling super energized this week. I got to be honest. So doing well. Awesome. Yeah. I feel pretty good too. I mean, I could always use some more energy. I don't know when I'm not needing more energy, but maybe some coffee would do the trick. Yeah. That actually, I think it actually might be the problem (laughs) because when I don't drink, when I cut caffeine out, I do way better. Like you just like wake up awake instead of needing the coffee, but that's not going to happen in my life right now. So maybe maybe after the wedding, you can get some coffee. Yeah. I think that's that that's going on the list. That's getting longer and longer of things I will worry about after the wedding. So what's your sparkly moment for this week? So this past week I have been jumping back into my workout routine and I know that it's not totally business related, but you know, like all of that mindset and business stuff kind of goes hand in hand. So that's felt really good. Part of the reason that I've felt so energized over the last few days. And I just noticed that like, I just feel better during the day. It's easier to focus. Like it has all of these like trickle down effects that I'm really enjoying. So that is my sparkly moment. Yeah, I totally agree. And we're going to do a morning routine episode coming up. I know it's on the schedule, but like for me, even like not working out, but just like taking a walk in the morning, like the difference in between how I am the rest of the day versus if I don't do that is it's just like night and day. Yeah, absolutely. So what was your sparkly moment? So I had a old client, like from when I first started writing, I was like remembering like when I was working on this stuff for her, reach out to me and she wants to do some, she wants to do a revamp of her website copy and some new product descriptions. And it's like a client that I love. She's like super fun. And like, it's, it's a lot of like party dresses kind of thing. And she loves to just like, get like super like into it. And it's like the product descriptions are like sneak backstage in this dress. And she's very like into like a fun brand voice. And she's not afraid of the fact that I raised my prices since I'm not a newbie anymore. And we're going to start in April after the wedding. So it's just sort of falling perfectly into place. And I'm excited to work on that again too. So, oh my God, that sounds like the perfect client for you. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank Thank you. So today we are going to be talking about how to get more engagement on social media. One of my favorite topics to talk about. I feel like I talk about it almost every day with clients. And honestly, this is one of the most common questions that I get from people in general online. And so lots of these strategies are pretty universal. So you can apply them to Instagram, TikTok, your email marketing in some cases as well. So like using this across the board in your marketing is going to be super helpful. So one of the frustrating things about social media is that it changes really quickly. And so, you know, something that you're using one day might not work the next. And so like making sure that you are using a mix of calls to action, you know, kind of switching up your strategy here and there, taking note of what's working and what's not can really, it can benefit your content. It can benefit your audience and just, you know, leaning into the pieces that are really working for your business. I'm so excited for you to just kind of share all your knowledge on this. You're literally the person I always think of when somebody is like, it just like, like what are amongst our friends are be like, Oh, I think I want to do this on social media. I'm like, ask Meg. It's just like, she, you know, this stuff, like I think it's just second nature to you. So I'm excited for you to share your experience with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like when we're talking about how to get engagement, one of the main things that I always suggest to clients is like, it seems so simple, but asking more questions on social media in general gets that conversation going. So it becomes almost like a two way street instead of you just giving that information. And so saying like, which one of these is your favorite? Can you spot the difference between A or B, you know, who's next. If if you're offering a service, like who's next for one of these, like, what do you think of this new thing that I've been working on? These are the types of questions that you can ask your audience. You can use them in your captions and, you know, in your content itself, lots of different ways that you can integrate these. Yeah. I think questions are so great. And that that's, this is one of those like universal concepts that works for a lot of marketing things. When I'm doing subject line for emails, like half of them, more than half of them are always just questions because it starts this, like it's called like an open loop or something in your brain and your brain just kind of automatically wants, wants an answer to a question, like just to resolve things, just to keep it tidy. And so when you do that, when you have a question that actually people want to jump in and give an answer to, I saw somebody do something the other day. It was like, Oh, what's a book you'd recommend 
about this, you know, and people love to recommend that stuff. Like that's just that tap. That's so smart because it taps into identity too. You know, it's like, oh, well I have a great book recommendation. So I'm going to answer this, even though maybe I don't respond to a lot of stuff on social media. Absolutely. And one thing I want to add just to, and you mentioned it just now in your examples too, is whenever you use the words you or your, it, there's a psychological thing that happens that it automatically grabs the attention of the person that's reading that message. And so I always try to recommend to folks to use you or your in the hooks of your videos or your, you know, the subject line, whatever you're working on so that it really grabs that person's attention. Yeah. That's super smart. So now that we've asked a question and some people have responded, like what's the best way to sort of take advantage of that and keep the conversation going? Absolutely. So if people are asking you questions, let's say in your comment sections on social media, I always recommend that you try to respond to as many comments as you possibly can. What I like to do is I like to set a timer when I'm responding to comments. So I'll say like, okay, for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to respond to as many comments as I can on my past posts. You can also, this is like kind of like secret sauce kind of strategy, but like, I like to respond to comments in my kind of like in between moments. And so let me explain like what that means. So like if I've ordered a coffee and I'm like waiting for the barista to give me my coffee, that's like an in-between moment. Or, you know, if you're waiting at the bus stop or something like that, where you're just not doing anything, you normally would be scrolling. You can use that time to respond to comments and kind of be productive with that time. Another tip that I'll give you too, is that some social media platforms do have a desktop versions where you can respond to comments and respond to messages and stuff like that. And so for a lot of people responding on a computer is a lot faster faster than responding on the phone. And so definitely make sure that you check out to see if you have access to those features on your account and leverage some of those features just because that can save you a bunch of time. Another great strategy too is to do video replies. So TikTok has this feature and it's such a fun way to engage with their audience just because number one, they feel like they're getting like a personalized response from you and they are, right? So that's like, you know, like that's you reaching out to them kind of on a personal basis and answering their questions so that, you know, it helps to build that bond and build that trust. And two, with video replies, you can really get a lot more across than you can in like a text. So, you know, people can see your facial expressions. You can express more with your hands. If that's something where you communicate a lot with your hands, you know, you can put on costumes, you can act something out when you're responding to them. There's just a lot more room for expression when you are responding to someone in that way. And finally, if if somebody is commenting on your post, if it's appropriate, responding to them with a question can also be super helpful. So, you know, asking someone in response, like, was this a helpful tip to you? Or would you use this strategy in your business? Or, you know, thanks so much for your comment on this. Which one was your favorite? That helps to keep the conversation going. Again, this is going to drive up that engagement on your post. I love that. I think the video replies to like, so many people probably are asking the same question in their heads and aren't writing it down, you know, aren't engaging. And so you're just, it, it's just tapping into even more of like knowing who your audience is by doing that. So that's super smart. Yeah, absolutely. I love video replies and I love getting video replies too. Like as somebody who's in the online space, like you always feel like, oh, like this is super cool. Like I got a response from somebody that I really respect or something like that. So yeah, they can be fun. So to take us into our next topic a little bit, and this is, you know, what we, I feel like this is like our number one marketing tip is always just talk to your audience and find out what they want to hear about. So how can we do that when it comes to getting more engagement? Absolutely. So the first place that I always recommend people look is the comment sections of your videos. So this is going to give you a ton of ideas for more content pieces. You can also look to YouTube. It's a really great resource. So there's a lot of big creators on YouTube that just plain and simple do not have time to respond to all the comments that come in. And so a lot of the questions in the comment sections go unanswered. And so those can be great content ideas ideas for you and be essentially like jumping off points for even more content ideas, more engagement. Other tools that I would recommend include answerthepublic.com, answersocrates.com. You can also look at Uber suggest to get ideas for like what people are searching on Google for. So yeah, those are some tools and kind of strategies. Awesome. What is the answer Socrates? I've heard of, I've used the other two. What that one's new to me. So it's almost the same as answer the public. It's essentially uh, a collection of questions that people are asking online to Google, other search engines, that kind of thing. So it pulls in the most
most asked questions around certain keywords. Cool. So one other tip that I like to give clients is that it's super helpful when you are, especially when you're creating like video content or something like that, to make sure that you're, you feel like you're talking to one person. This is kind of a universal kind of rule in marketing. Just people need to know that you are speaking directly to them. And again, the more specific you can get when it comes to speaking to their pain points or pleasure points and, you know, really talking to that one person and not saying like, Hey guys, or like, Hey, you all, Hey y'all, any of that kind of thing, you know, and making it very pointed to that one person, it's going to feel more personal. So something that like always gets my attention, you know, I try, I, I've, I've, especially lately just had so much going on that I try not to spend too much time on social media, but especially like TikTok too, whenever somebody like gets all fired up about something or they're saying something that is not what everyone else is saying, that unfortunately is what's going to suck me in. So how, like, what's the strategy behind that? Absolutely. So this is actually a strategic marketing move that a lot of creators use in bringing up controversial topics. Just because if you state your opinion, especially if it's something like polarizing, if you state your opinion online, people are going to have something to say about it, positive or negative, and they will say it in the comments. (laughs) And so that is another great way to essentially generate more chatter within your comment section, get people talking, get it, get people sharing it with their friends. And yeah, it's just, it's a strategy that a lot of creators use. Yeah. The other thing is like, I think in terms of like controversial doesn't necessarily need to be like, oh, we're talking about like politics or these big topics. It's literally like this moisturizer sucks. This one's better. Like it's that sort of, you know, very like in your world, whatever your, you know, your niche, your topic is to just sort of, you know, stand for something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, a controversial topic that I, that I take a lot on my pages, like fonts that I do or don't like. And it's like, that's like pretty, like, you know, like pretty silly, but like people tend to have an opinion, even about silly things like that. It's like a judgment call that happens, right? Where I'm like, use this if you want to be cool. And if you don't want to be cool, then you'll be over here with these (laughs) weirdo fonts, you know? So, but yeah, I also wanted to chat a bit about a strategy that is a super fun one. I've seen quite a few creators use this as well, but like putting something interesting or out of place in the background of your video or of your photos can get people talking as well. I wanted to bring up a specific example of this. So there have been a handful of videos that have been floating around TikTok that people will just be doing something normal, sitting on the couch, reading something like that. And then all of a sudden behind them, a door will open or something like that. And people in the comments go nuts for it just because it's like, oh, is that a ghost? Who knows? Like, is it it's staged? Nobody knows really what's going on. I mean, I mean, it's likely stage, let's be honest, but people do those kinds of things on purpose because they know that it generates chatter in the comments, people talking, all of that kind of stuff. Not saying that you should be closing doors or opening doors in all of your TikTok videos, but like there's lots of different ways you can integrate this. One of the ways that I do it in my videos is sometimes I'll put a painting upside down or something like that. And so people see a, you know, the figure is like running upside down, like in the painting and they're like, what's going on here? So yeah, it's fun little, fun little trick. I love that. It's like an Easter egg for your audience. You know, it's like, who's paying attention. Exactly. Exactly. So what about, I'm one of those people that goes on social media and never turns on the sound on my phone. So I really appreciate the captions from a perspective that like a lot of times I will just keep going. If you don't have captions and I'm don't want to hear anything. I don't know. I like the silence or whatever, obviously like that, that holds attention. How can you use that for engagement? Absolutely. So captions are an amazing asset to any video, just because like you said, said, there are lots of people that are just like you that scroll without the sound on, you know, there's varieties of reasons for this. You know, maybe you you haven't gotten up yet. You're still in bed with your partner and they're not awake yet. And just, you know, like you're just scrolling without the sound on, or maybe you're just in a room where you're not in a position to have the sound on, but captions can be super great because I've seen a lot of creators that use them in a way where they intentionally misspell things for engagement. They are just like a, a factor that keep people engaged in general, just because it's one of those things that keeps changing on the screen. So anytime that something changes, that's going to keep us engaged just because it's like a visual change on the screen. So yeah, lots of creators use them also to essentially like give additional information as to what's going on in the video. So like, you know, if they didn't include something in the actual speaking of the video, they can be used to give additional information as well. But using captions is something that I always recommend to clients because it's a great way to make your video is super accessible to everyone. Yeah. One of the things I think too, like with captions, when there's something misspelled, whether it's intentional or not intentional, 
well, and just the, the software isn't picking it up in the right way is like, it creates that dissonance, right? It's like, oh, something's not right there. Uh, maybe I have to tell her about it. Or maybe, you know, maybe somebody else sees how funny this joke is too, because it's supposed to be this word, but it's really this word, which makes no sense. So yeah, I totally see how that would, again, it's like that open loop, just kind of drawing you in thing. Yeah. I've seen a handful of creators, like put very controversial words, like as their misspelled word in the caption. So they'll say like mistake and it'll go to something else. That's like, clearly that's not what they meant in the video. So yeah, it can be a, a fun thing to play with. Well, that's all we've got for today. You should pick one, two, three, all of these <laughs> strategies and implement them into your, into what you're doing on social right now. Meg just gave us so much good stuff. Give it a try and see where it gets you. So thank you for listening. And did you know that you can now rate podcasts on Spotify? So if you enjoyed this episode, we love it if you left us a five-star rating wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, stay sparkly.